It's a joy to be here again. Another day, a new day. Yesterday has gone, today also is coming to pass. Meaning that we are approaching the coming back of Jesus Christ. What a joy to be ready to meet with him. So before I move forward, I would like to share with you a verse in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verse, maybe I can read this one, two, and uh, possibly three. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the gospel preached to us just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them because those who heard did not combine it with faith. We were given the promise to enter the kingdom of God. Therefore, we have to be careful. The main, the main issue today in the church is that a Christian, believers don't want to be careful at all with the kingdom of God which is coming. People can tell you about the return of Jesus Christ, but they are not preparing themselves, carefully preparing themselves for that return. They are not even sure if Jesus Christ will come back today, where are they going to be? For that reason, Hebrews is reminding us today, those brothers, brethren, who heard it yesterday, they didn't, they were not careful. And because they were not careful, the gospel which was preached to them was without any value. And the gospel had no value to them because they couldn't combine it with faith. Do you combine what you heard, what you learn with faith? Do you carefully consider what the Bible says in order to prepare the kingdom of God? It's true that you are going to enter that kingdom but something is said at the end of verse 7 today if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts many people many people most of us we hear the voice of god but we harden our hearts and by hardening the heart that's when we fall we get lost we start to justify our actions, our attitude, and believing that, okay, I will be here and God will come to seek for me. I will wait for God here and he will do the job. I'm tired. I've been doing it for years. And yeah, he knows me now. That's enough. For God is not, it is not a matter of knowing you yesterday. And then today you have to do whatever you want to do. It doesn't work like that. God wants you to be every single day fresh in Him. Because He's a God not only of the past, but the present and the future. So every time you walk by Him, by His side, walk with Him, do things with Him, then we'll be happy with you. Otherwise, you may end up to be among those that will tell you, go outside of my kingdom, I don't know you. He's a father, he's our parent, that's true, but he's a parent who sometimes can tell you, get out of here, I don't know you. My mom will never tell me that. Your father, your brother, your sister, you will never tell that to your daughter or son. Even if they are wrong, they belong to you. But for God, he has been warning us, be careful. 
Matthew 24, verse 7, is that you read last time? Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famine and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of the birth pains. Then you'll be handed over to persecuted and put to death. And you'll be hated by the nations because of me. Everything that God created has got two facets. One side, if it's day, daytime now, we can expect nighttime to come. If someone is tall, you'll find someone short. If the house is big, you'll find a small house. We have the highest, which is a heavens, and we have also the lowest part, which is a earth. For God, we work with two sides of things. But those two sides are opposite to each other, completely opposite. And once you belong to one side, it's almost impossible to belong to another one. It's like the equator, you know, the way that the equator separates the world, cuts it in two. We have the northern part and southern one. And the equator is just like a, somehow it's just like, I'll call it like a, it's like a road. Let me call it, it's like a road. But you can walk into it, just big, bigger than this. And it's like, you know, someone maybe came with a truck and made this very big path, and it doesn't end. And in my country, it passes somewhere. We walked, I walked in the water. And it's warm, you feel really good. But when you are walking there, you forget that this is where the limit is between the northern part of the world and the southern part. And whenever we walk between the limits, as God says, if you're not warm, I mean you're not hot or cold, you become warm, it's a matter of confusion. You don't sometimes know where and why exactly. And many Christians today, the church of today, is living in that equator. Where they don't care, they don't care. I can be here one foot, the other time I can be here, it's okay. It's like, you know, left and right, I'm everywhere. Because I don't want to miss out what is happening in, on this side of the world. Today, the sin has been controlling the church than I've never seen it before. When I was young, people used to teach us, if you belong to God, you have to fear sin. You have to run away from the sin. But today, people who belong to God, sins have become their friends. It's okay. Everything is okay. Everything is all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can just do it a little bit. It's fine. And because of that, we are reaching now the point of Matthew 24. There is a big war in us. Many people will interpret that verse talking about what is happening in Iran, Iraq, Syria, and so on. But in ourselves, we have got a few kingdoms. We have got a few nations. And those nations, all of them are written in the book of Galatians chapter 4. We call them the fruit. We have the fruit of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit. Those fruits are nations. They are kingdom. You have a kingdom of peace. You have a kingdom of immorality. There is a kingdom of joy. There is a kingdom of love. All of those are in you. And for a good purpose, God puts the equators there to separate them. These belong to the flesh, and these belong to the spirit. And the war is coming. 
And as you and I, we know, our war is not of using guns, blood, but it's a spiritual war. And when Jesus was talking to his disciples about Matthew 24, it wasn't about uh, the war in one country here and there. No, this is a spiritual message because he's preparing us about his return. He's preparing us about his coming back. And when war starts inside you, you can have, uh, let me say, you love someone now. Suddenly, hatred will pop up. And an idea will come into you because that person did a small mistake somewhere. She did what you didn't like, and you feel like, ah, I don't like her anymore. I used to be a good friend. She has to you, I mean, she used to have a good place in my heart, but because of what she did, I feel like, no, things don't work anymore. You lose a battle. And some other time, ideas will start to grow big in your mind, and then you start to be shaken. Should I take this decision? Stop it completely. Cut her from me. No relationship anymore. So I can live my life. She can also live her life. It's like an earthquake. Shaking you. And you are between the two things. What to choose from here? Because that person did something wrong against me. Should I run away or should I continue? And many examples are there. Every single day, you and I, we go through the walls. My flesh will need something. And my spirit will say no. And me, as a physical body, I have to make the decision. With the help of God, of course. And that's where Jesus said, you have to consider things carefully. You have to make your decisions carefully. Because if you miss to do so, then you may end up to have the gospel which will never have any value. Whenever temptation comes, think about the value of the gospel you have learned. And then combine it with your faith. Do I have faith in God? If yes, then I'm not going to do this. Do you have a faith in the word of God? Yes, then I'm not going to give up. If you remember that you have faith in God and you know the word of God, it will be easy, very easy to win the battle. But if you know the word of God and you don't trust what the word says, you don't trust your God, then it will be easier to become lukewarm. Those who are living in the situation of in the middle life, I don't say that they don't know the word of God, they do know it, but they give up their faith. They don't trust 100% in it. To the point that people will tell you, we know God will understand. So then, that is the beginning of birth pain. The pain will start in you. And when the birth is coming, we don't know exactly what we see. No one will tell you how will your child will look like while they're inside. They can tell you the boy or girl fine, but they don't know how that child, that baby, the new baby baby will look like. They can't tell you. And when the pain comes, your neighbors, those who surround you, won't feel it. The pain is inside you. The person who bears the baby in her womb is the person who feels the pain. You can scream, you can shout for help. Those who surround you won't feel that pain. The pain is yours. In the advanced world, moms or moms, mothers will go to the maternity. When the time comes to give birth, parents are there, they will go to the maternity. In my world, in my continent, in my country in Africa, 
That is a time in where they will tell most women, it is time to see if you are strong. In some corners, they leave you alone and everyone will walk away. And you go through that pain by yourself and you may end up to give birth without no help. Yourself, you have to do it. It's like that sometimes you see on maybe National Geography, animals in the, you know, the world, they give birth by themselves. No one is there to help them. When you are in pain, where do you go? When pain comes in your life, when you have problems, when you feel like everything is turning sour, where do you go? Many people just try to say, okay, I will let manage my situation. I will handle it. You know, it's okay. They pretend like everything is okay while they're in pain. And the time of pain will be the good time to kneel down. Call upon Jesus. Jesus, come and help. Because look, I'm now between two things. I know the words. I have a little faith. But I'm falling apart because there is a big war in me. I'm in pain. I'm in trouble. Come and help me. Unfortunately, we have no time to talk to Jesus when we are going through pain. We wish, we prefer to talk to human beings. We prefer to run it with human beings. I've seen in this country when someone is going, you know, through the labor. A midwife will be there. Why not a neighbor? Why not anyone? A midwife. Why should we have midwives? Because they know the job. Because they know how to handle the situation. They understand how things work better. So if you go to Jesus, Jesus will help you better than me. Jesus can assist you better than me. You can share your problem with someone, it's okay. Whenever you need the support of prayer, you can. But that does not mean that your problem will become now the problem with that person and for you to relax. So the Bible continues and saying, then famine will be there and well, oh, that's what we know all together, the word of God is food. When we are talking about farming, it means scarcity of food. There is no food at all. When there is no food, what happens? People will start to feel like we need something. Our bodies will feel like we need something. Weak. Yeah, exactly. So our bodies will start to become weak. They will start to lose the strength. Then after some days, someone can weigh 250 kilograms. 10 days later, because they are not eating, they will maybe 70. They will lose weight. They will become more and more weak. Today, the world will say, yeah, we have got famine in the New Papua Guinea, famine maybe in New Zealand, famine in France, or any country in Africa. But we don't talk much about famine in the church. The famine of the church is that the word of God is there, food is there, but people don't want to eat it. It's like, uh, as I used to see on TV, those anorexic girls, you know? They refuse to eat because they want just to look skinny. Someone who is 20 years old wants to wear 35 kilograms. And being honest, I saw one time on TV, they were showing, you know, those type of ads for, it was World, I think, World Vision, where they showed a child who was suffering. And someone said, wow, I'll be so happy, girl. I'll be so happy to look like that. That's so sexy. And I was like, what? For her, it was like, you know, to be skinnier to the point where you can count all the ribs for us, that's, that's so sexy, that's so good. That is the situation that the church is crossing now. 
We have food, but uh, people don't want to eat it. And the more they are not eating it, the more they are becoming weaker and weaker, sick every time, and finally they lose weight. And they believe the way that they look like, that's a fashion. Everybody will look at me whenever I walk around, people will appreciate me because I'm skinny. The word of God today has become something that people like you and I start to hate. Christians today don't anymore love the word of God. They don't love it. People want to go to church, listen to the preacher who tells them, brother, you are blessed. Brother, you will have that. Sister, you are blessed. Ah, praise the Lord, because the blessing is coming. You don't have a job. Tomorrow you'll have a job. Yes. You don't have this. Tomorrow you'll get it. They are happy with those type of preaching which talks about material things only. Because we want just to gain, get, gain, and get, gain. Fill up our basket. That's all. But when it becomes the matter of filling spiritual baskets, we start to hate it. The message become boring. The message become unpowerful. The message become it takes so long, it should stop now. The, and finally, our spirit, our heart are becoming more and more weak. That's where Jesus says in Hebrews chapter 4, we don't have to be like them. We don't have to be like that. We have to be careful. You can know your Bible from Genesis, maybe to Revelation. It's okay. But you have to be careful because you may miss out the kingdom of God. And I will hate, personally, I will hate to look back. I've come from far. You know, all this time I come to church, maybe I pray, I preach, I've given everything to God. And finally, I'm not making it. How are you going to feel? You were saved 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 5 years ago, 15 years ago, and you told everybody, Jesus is my friend. I love Jesus. Now we are going to wait the end of the time. You start to give up. You start to become weak. You start to feel like, oh no, I'm not going to church today. My dear brother, my dear sister, if that is the case, come back to Christ. If you listen and if you heard his voice, don't harden your heart. Go back to him as quick as possible. Yesterday there was a party. The community of Congo organized a, a party somewhere in a, one of the cities here. And they were like, yeah, you should come to that party so we can celebrate all night. But if you look at what has been happening in the Congo, you can't even eat. You can't even talk. Every single day, if I don't exaggerate, I will receive images of killings, murder, execution. Reps and all of them every single day, and to the point that sometimes I will sit down in my house and become sad. And someone will tell me now, okay, come and let us celebrate in remembrance of the independence of the Congo, which was the 30th of June 1960. How can you celebrate while others are dying? How can you celebrate while others are mourning? How can you celebrate? Let us do a party while the time is shaking us. This is a worst time to do such a thing. And if I could celebrate last night, maybe I couldn't be here this morning. Because all night I could be there singing, dancing, jumping, eating, drinking. And now, by this time, I should be in bed, maybe sleeping. And today, many Christians do that. We prefer to go where people are celebrating 
people are jumping, people are eating, people are doing all the wrong things and sacrifice is a little time with Jesus Christ is a Sunday. Maybe sacrifice is a prayer meeting. Sacrificing, maybe it's a personal time to read their Bible. And when someone starts to take those steps, it becomes a danger because they are now living somewhere in the equator. Oh, this is really a, it's a very big gutter. Yeah, I can okay, it's warm. I feel better here. It's warm here. But for God, you are outside of the line. You are putting yourself at the point where God will spew you out because you are warm. And as a stupid people, I'm sorry to say that, they will say, okay, I can just be whoever I am and when my time to die will come, I will repent. Do you know what minute, what second are you going to die? Really? Do you know when your time will come? No, you don't. You have grace today. You have what you call the hand of God telling you, come to me. You refuse to come. And if you refuse to come now, I'm not quite sure if tomorrow you will have the same opportunity. So therefore, famine is there and you are killing yourself with anorexia, saying that you are not eating. Feed yourself. Feed your soul. Your soul is starving. Your mind is starving. Your body is starving. You have the fruit of the Holy Spirit in you. How often do you feed your nations? As I said, you can say, okay, famine in Ethiopia, famine in uh, Sudan, famine in somewhere, but your nations inside you, how often do you feed them? Have you even thought that you can feed your love? Have you even thought that you can feed your fruit of joy? Have you even thought that you can feed, you know, whatever you have as gift of spirit? Maybe not. Maybe people will be like, ah, yeah. The fruit of spirit, yeah, I know they are now. Ah, love, joy, yes. What do they eat? Because love needs to grow. Joy needs to grow. Peace needs to grow. Every single fruit. If we take an illustration from a tree, trees can have fruits and they grow every single day because the tree continues to feed them. Feed your gift of the Holy Spirit. Don't them starve. Don't let them starve. And if you don't know how to feed them, I can tell you the secret. All is written here. For example, live in peace with everyone. That's what the Bible says. Be in peace with everyone. That's a challenge. It means that you have to seek that peace with every single person. Your enemies, those that you like, those that you dislike, you have to be in peace with them. And by trying to bring that peace, you are feeding that gift. Your gift is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Love your enemies. Why to love my enemies? That is the food to feed that gift of love in you. By loving your enemies, you are making that food to benefit from whatever you are doing so that you can become big. As you know, fruit will only be harvested when they are ready. No one will eat a mango which is green. I'm not quite sure if you have tried it before. No one will eat, let me say, an orange which is green. How does it taste like? Sour, man. You feel just like, you know, a funny taste because the orange is not ready yet. By feeding your orange, by feeding your fruit, it will become ripe and then you can eat some. Although we can love bananas, but when bananas are green, sometimes they don't have the taste of bananas. So you need to let them to become ready before you eat them. So feed your gifts. And by feeding your gift, you win the battle. 
the fruits of the flesh which are attacking your fruit of the spirit, you have also to notice them. That's your exercise of every day. Whatever you want to do, remember, this is a fruit of the flesh. This is an idea maybe from Adam. This is an idea maybe from this and that. And if you don't know them, read them from the book of Galatians. Refresh your memory. And once you know them, you can protect yourself. Once you know this person is coming to destroy me, you can protect yourself. I've seen on TV here, there is a program around seven, it used to be around seven, seven police or seven something like that. The police used to make put a program on TV. As I'll give you an image, a photo of someone. This person, whenever you see him, call his number. Because this person is a danger for the community. Be careful. And you'll be like, hey, this young person looks so handsome. He looks so good. Who can imagine this one can have a gun and you have to be careful. Don't be mistaken by the appearance of the situation which is coming to you. Because some of those situations are fruit of the flesh and they are coming to destroy the fruit of the spirit which live in you. And the police who will own you is the Holy Spirit in you. Will tell you, hey, be careful. Read the word of God. Whenever you see this sign, you have to know that a danger is coming. If you don't care about the danger, then you will get lost. You will lose the kingdom of God. Thank you so much for your time for today. I will stop there by encouraging you to stick, to give your efforts in reading the Bible, in practicing it, and to differentiate what are the fruit of the flesh to the fruit of the spirit. In any situation, even when you are talking, an idea can come up, I can lie a little bit, know that okay, although I can look better, but lying is not the fruit of the spirit. I have to stop it. And that's the victory. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you because you love us. Teach us how to take care of the fruit of the Spirit you put in us. Teach us how to eat your God, your weight, O oh Lord, so that we can not die with famine. Lord, help us to overcome the earthquake which is going through us. And in case of problems, trouble, we have to come to you and shout for help. Lord, protect us and take care of us from every single time, minute of our lives. Bless our families, assist us, save those who are lost in our families and in our surroundings. Lord, we want you to be on our side and walk by our side. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.